Hey guys, so in this week's episode of Make It With Calvin, we're talking about this right here, the Hicktop D3 Hero IDEX 3D printer. I'm gonna be talking about my experiences with it, why I have it, what it's been printing like, and all that good stuff. So let's dive into it. Okay, so first off, full disclosure, this machine was purchased on a generous discount from Hicktop themselves as an Amazon return. So the two problems that I had with the machine out of the box are strictly because it was a return, not because it was a production issue. I thought I'd clear that up right now. Now the two issues I did have with the machine out of the box was the barrel connector for the heated bed, the nut on it was crushed and was unable to be straightened out, and the power switch in the back was defective. So I was able to quickly repair both of those just using parts I purchased off Amazon and got the machine up and running very quickly. I was actually able to double check it worked before I did the repairs, before I did anything extensive with it. I wanted to make sure it was fixed up. Now, as you can see, the machine is starting a print right now that will be running during our talk, but let's talk about what I actually use the machine for. So as you guys are probably familiar, I do a lot of 3D printed model train components. And the reality is a lot of them get shipped out to a third party production company to get printed, which is perfectly fine. But the problem is before then I need to have prototypes made and that's where this machine comes in really handy for that. Being it's about a two week turnaround time to get parts, you gotta make sure that what you're sending out is good and this really helps in that department. Currently I have the machine set up with some PLA on this spool here and I transferred spools because my mom accidentally melted the spool eons ago. And I think it got mentioned in a video once. But this uh, side is running Polymaker's Breakaway Poly Support material. And a little bit on that in a minute. But the advantage is I can do really complex prints on here and have really good surface finishes that I can't achieve otherwise using other methods. I can also orient parts so they print better. Here's a good example. Now this little locomotive cab right here was professionally printed but it's a great example normally you'd want to print it like this so that everything is vertical but the problem is the windows and these little hold down tabs and any fine details like that are going to be super duper fragile so what i will normally do is i will print the item like this standing up on end but the problem is this surface on the outside and all in here is going to need extensive support material and running same material supports, it's gonna look really, really ugly. And when you're trying to post something up and go, hey, how many of you people want something? You want to actually look halfway decent, not look like, oh, that doesn't look very good. So that's where this comes in handy. Off camera, I ran this little cab here as a prototype for a train, and I did it standing up in this orientation here. Now, the nice thing about that is, the windows have a little detail in them that turned out nice and strong and also the roof itself doesn't have any irritating layer lines on it in terms of like the steps that you normally get so it makes finishing a lot easier there as well now i'm going to cut to a time lapse of me 3d printing up some prototype parts for an articulated locomotive build from a while ago and kind of gives you guys an idea of how i use this in the prototyping field you'll notice that two of the parts are printed with the single nozzle setup which you can totally do and then one of them was printed with the dual heads working back and forth and that was really nice because when all was said and done i just broke away the support material off camera and i was left with some nice prints that quite honestly are good enough for me to post up and go hey what do you guys think so let's cut to that and then we'll come back and talk to it a little
as for the print quality of the machine, I have to say that I'm actually very impressed with it. Now, there are a couple of things that I feel like could be done a little bit differently. The machine uses a direct drive setup, but it's not a gear reduction between the stepper and the extruder. I personally am more of a fan of a gear reduction drive. I find them to be a bit more precise and a bit more powerful, but the stock setup definitely gets the job done. Also, I do not believe that these are all metal hot ends, which, hear me out on this, at first seems like it's a big deal, and for anybody who knows me, they know I'm a big proponent of all metal hot ends. They have a lot of advantages, but at the same time, I used to think that I'd want to print a lot in uh, PTG and use support material for that. But the reality is I actually found that to be a much bigger nightmare, mostly because of the cost of PETG friendly support materials and also just the fact that it, PETG just tends to warp a lot more than PLA. And I thought I was going to be actually doing a bunch of like short run production on this machine, not just sending the work out to be done professionally and using it more as a prototyping machine. So in those departments, actually running PLA and a PLA friendly support material, in this case, Polymaker Breakaway support, actually was the better option. Now, I know you guys are wondering, well, Calvin, why don't you use dissolving supports? And there's a couple of times where I have used them, but the honest reality is with dissolving supports, they're extremely hydroscopic, so I've got to keep them inside of a drying container almost constantly, keep them in like a dehydrator running almost 24 seven, and I really just don't like doing that. Two, dissolving them away is a very slow process, especially if you do not have a setup designed for it. And three, it's just messy. You guys have to remember, I'm down at my parents' house temporarily for school because it's off, but when I'm up for school, I'm renting somewhere and I really don't want to have to deal with buckets and sticky, gluey water. Nah, it's, it's not worth it. So I find for most stuff, the breakaway support, either as the whole model being done with support or just as an interface material, depending upon the application, definitely is way more than adequate to get the job done. Now, one other thing, two other things that I wish were a little bit different on the machine besides having a geared extruder, which I hear might or might not be in the process. I think one or two people have received prototypes of them. So we'll see if that uh, becomes a thing or not, is I wish the bed was a 120 volt setup instead of a 24 volt setup. Not that it detracts any from the machine's performance at all. It's just a personal preference. It's a bit more efficient. It heats up faster, but at the same time, you know what? What's there does get the job done. I might look into going to a 120 volt bed in the future. We'll see if that pans out or not, but I think I've been a little spoiled by my artillery with the ability to go like that up to printing temp and this thing's a couple minutes behind, but it's not that big of a deal. And lastly, I wish the uh, TFT screen on here had a more higher contrast for the characters that are on it. They're somewhat light, so personally it's a little difficult to see, but hey, you know what? At the end of the day, all those points are minor. They're things that if you really wanted to, you could fix yourself, but the big thing is this machine just works, and that's the big thing for me. I'm happy to live with a couple of small little things like that if it's a machine that I know I can push go on, first layer goes down good, and we're probably gonna be fine from there. So in conclusion, should you buy one of these machines? Well, that's kind of a loaded question. If you're going to be doing things where you can get away with not having to use a different material for the supports, then honestly, I don't know if this machine would be the best choice for you or not. Now, if you're somebody who does a lot of cosplay or prop printing, or you're somebody like me who prototypes a lot of complex items before they're sent out to a third party manufacturing company and you want to make sure they're good, you might want to consider this machine because it opens up a whole new world of possibilities to you. I find myself prototyping a lot with it and sometimes I've done, you know, final production parts with it, but in general I use it for prototyping because very quickly and very economically I can get complex parts done that otherwise would take me a while to get or uses equipment I do not have access to to get it done. So for that, it's it's been a great machine. So I hope that helps you guys decide about the machine. If you have any questions, please leave them down in the comments below. I'll also link to some videos that my good buddy Jimmy from Jimmy Shaw's Tidbits has done with the machine. He's kind of played around more with some of the other settings in here that I personally don't use. But hey, you know what? To each their own. See you guys later.